A blocker. Well, see, that's the problem. He's good at it. Like when you look at the grades and look at him blocking, he's a great blocker. I think we talked about this where I'm like, the part of the problem with Kyle Pitts is he should have been mailing those in. Like when he showed that he could block, that was the worst thing he could do for the staff where they were like, oh, we can keep him in on blocking place. Like he can block. We can use him as a decoy. We can use him as a as an actual blocker for our scheme because he's good at it. Like Kyle Pitts is a good blocker. And then this is like, hey, you can block and you won't do anything <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he should have uh, air mailed it. He should have been like the the Dolphins on the right side when uh, Nick Bosa was coming around the edge. Um, but we'll see. I'm excited to see what Ritter uh, does, and um, I don't know. We'll we'll see what ultimately happens here. Uh, Evan is Joe Burrow now the MVP favorite? No. No. Why? Next, next question. Why? Because Patrick Mahomes still exists. But who owns Patrick Mahomes? Who is the Patrick Mahomes slayer? Okay, so here's the thing about mm-hmm. that game. The Bengals played awesome. I'm mm-hmm. not taking anything away from the Bengals. They had a great game plan defensively. Joe Burrow was on it. Yeah. And T. Higgins were on it. Patrick Mahomes still played really well. Mm-hmm. They, they he still played really well. Like, they're a Travis Kelsey fumble or, like, a Harrison Butker, like, missed field goal. And that game going into overtime. Mm-hmm. And, like, at that point, we were kind of just like, why are you putting Harrison Bucker out there when you have Patrick Mahomes and there's three minutes left in the game and, like, you're facing Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and they can go score a touchdown or, like, ice the game. It's – Patrick Mahomes is still the MVP. Like, he is still when – t- when it comes to most valuable player, like, he's getting – He's got Marquez Valdez Gantling playing like an actual receiver. Juju Smith Schuster is like putting up great numbers after considered being like MIA in Pittsburgh. Am I crazy yeah. or is he a lot bigger now? Oh, he's huge. I okay. Think, I think he brought, was brought into Kansas City to be like, hey, Travis Kelsey's going to do all <laughs> the receiver stuff. Mm-hmm. You do all the tight end stuff. Yeah. He's catching all these passes over the middle and just getting killed. Yeah. He's, he's getting right back up. And I'm like, oh, good for you, man. Good for you. He bulked let up me, for it. Let me just say this. Aaron Rodgers and and his situation is good precedence for this conversation. Mm-hmm. Right? Aaron Rodgers lost to Vontae Adams. There's obviously a lot more than just that going on with Rodgers, the Packers, and everything in general. But we can definitively see the effect of losing one of the best receivers in the NFL when you're a Hall of Fame quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. It made a huge difference. Patrick Mahomes lost, you know, if, if Adams is one, a Hill is one B mm-hmm. right. Also one of the best, if not best receivers in the NFL, and they have not missed a beat. And in fact, you might argue that Patrick Mahomes has played better this year because he can do a lot of different things now, rather than just throw it to Hill, so, which by the way, two was really, really enjoyed doing that. So, so this year, after losing Tyreek Hill, the Chiefs are the only team in the NFL to average over 30 points a game. Hmm. Like, they haven't missed a beat. Uh, if you look at EPA per drive, this is one of the best offenses ever in terms of EPA per drive. And they don't have Tyreek Hill anymore. Mm-hmm. And this is better than the years they had Tyreek Hill. When you look at the advanced stats. And that's just how good Patrick Mahomes is playing. I think the only person right now that I'd put in that conversation is like, legitimate like right now chances to win MVP is Jalen Hurts because mm. he is he is turned into a phenomenal passer like what they did to the Titans yesterday was not fair like it was it just wasn't fair to Tennessee Tennessee is a really good defense AJ Brown ran over Fulton and got hurt he just like ran him over he dunked on the entire secondary it mm. was like it's like watching an NBA player like in high school where like you know like this dude's gonna play in the league mm. and he's just like dunking on dudes and like nothing looks very difficult that's aj brown like aj yeah. brown is essentially like zion williamson when he was in high school where like you see the other kids and then you see him and it's like oh there's the nba guy yeah there was a stat that i put out like earlier today um so i think on targets 15 yards downfield mm-hmm. his, his epa per target is almost 30 points higher than it was last year. 
So along with being the bully, like yards after the catch guy, he's now become one of the best downfield, like deep threats in the league. I think he's second behind Justin Jefferson in terms of targets on go routes and EPA per target on go routes. He's just become one of the five best receivers in the league. And Jalen Hurts is getting the ball to him like downfield, on time. He's playing really well within the offense, but also elevating it because of his ability to run the ball. They essentially created a damned if you do, damned if you don't offense. If you want to slow the box and be great against the run that the Titans were, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. Devontae Smith, I think, quietly had 102 yards. He's a really, really good number two. Like, it's just not he's, fair when he's your number two. I think he'd be a number having, one on most teams. Devontae Smith is having the Jalen Waddle season from last year mm. where you're like, you kind of look at it and you have to like double take the stats and you're like, wow, he's really having a good year. And it's crazy because now Jalen Wall and Devontae Smith have both become number twos on their team. And they're mm-hmm. probably the two best number twos in the league right now. Yeah. yeah. And it's, they've created, like I said, an offense where if you decide to play against the pass and you want to take away all the explosives of A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, they have the best offensive line of football and a very mobile quarterback. They will punch you in the face in the run game. And it's really cool to see. So I think... I think that's why it hurts, hurts though. Like, I think he's just a victim of the team being too good around him. Where I think the case for him, they'll just be like, well, look at... You got A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. You have the best offensive line in football. You have this. You have that. Where... I think MVP, generally speaking, it's like the the narrative matters so much. And the narrative around Hertz is going to be he is doing a great job of doing exactly what he's just like doing exactly what he's expected to do or with this with these kind of weapons and this kind of protection and this kind of run game that like it just doesn't feel like he's having to do more than necessary to win football games. Where like Joe Burrow's path to the MVP is that he didn't connect on a single deep ball uh yesterday against the chiefs like all last year was just deep balls throw it up to jamar chase and we'll see what happens we'll take our chances and so that's now, the one before you go on i want to say yeah that's my that's my argument jamar or like joe burrow is having a good season i think he's having he, a great year i i do too but would you say he's having a better year than than last year yes because he's having to do more like he's having to like him reading the field and doing stuff in the intermediate far more than he ever did. Also, the offensive line was bad. He had to play without Jamar Chase. He had to learn how to be effective in the NFL without Jamar Chase. And I think that ultimately benefited him in a significant way because he could like I saw with Hinden Hooker this year, like Hinden Hooker in game two, he opens with Pitt and he's just going to Cedric Tillman over and over and over again because he trusts this dude so much. He's a big bodied receiver you just can throw it up. Like these quarterbacks love that safety net where it's like, if things break down, I I have this guy out wide who is just going to be a mismatch every single time. When you take that away, it just forces them to scan the field in a different way. It forces them to have to do different things and trust different guys and play the game differently. And I think Burrow having to just look at his guys didn't really get Hayden Hurst more involved and do the stuff like the, do the check downs more often. Joe Mixon, who's been great this year. I think he's just evolved where now he can beat you over the top. He can beat you in the immediate. He's cool, calm, collected. The offensive line's coming together. I don't know. I think the narrative for him and for Patrick Mahomes is just a lot neater than nope. Hurts. That's no just where I'm at. Agree. So you I'm guys agree on the offense part for the Bengals. I think mm. this offense, it might not be as explosive as it was last year, but this one feels more sustainable. Right. Like you're going to go into games later in the season and you're not going to have to rely on the Joe to Jamar. 20 yard play to keep the offense going. Like if you look at the chiefs game, they were running the ball really well. Like this is something I didn't expect from right. the Isaiah's look good. line. Like Samaj P Ryan was playing awesome. And I was like, Samaj P Ryan's like doing this. I didn't mm-hmm. think Samaj P Ryan had that bag, but it's so cool. Like watching Joe Burrow operate now, because now he's not relying on the deep ball where he's like getting everybody involved. He's taking check downs. He's scrambling. Like, they're designing run plays for him. They were they a quarterback draw for a touchdown. He's mm-hmm. a more complete quarterback this year, but we know that winning the MVP is not just, you know, it, it has to have flash to it too. And like you guys have talked a lot about offense, and I think obviously we know the offensive skill players and obviously, you know, the quarterbacks are usually winners. And I know I'm a big, dumb idiot homer, uh, but let's remember that, like you mentioned, Eric, Eric Armstead has been out for the majority of the season this year, right? And we've seen what Nick Bosa has done till now. Right now, Nick Bosa is in NFL ranks, number one with 14 and a half sacks, number one 
with 62 pressures, number one with 19 QB hits, and pass, pass, rush, pass rush productivity is at 11.8, which is number one. I want you to guys to take a look at something real quick. Look at the last five games of the season that Nick Bosa will have. He's going to play the Buccaneers, who I think, I don't know, I've got to check with my manager.